Welcome back once again, everybody. Again, Happy New Year. Today's video is about overthinking and underfeeling. So if you can imagine that this is a scale, if you find yourself constantly uh, thinking about things and never really getting to a place of peace, a place of, okay, that's the plan, that's what I'm going to do, then this video is for you. Today, I really want to dive into this connection between overthinking and underfeeling and how overthinking serves as a defense mechanism and it prevents us from truly experiencing our emotions. It is time to break free from this cycle. There is a physical impact of overthinking stress, tension, anxiety, all of that will take a toll on your body, but not to mention the fact that we are rewiring our brains, literally forming new connections to not only that specific event or that specific circumstance or person, but we're actually training our brain to now be more aware of situations like that. So we become more suspicious and we look into things that are not even necessarily there to harm us, we look for enemies or we look for ways to protect ourselves against these enemies in situations where they just aren't there at all. So not only is overthinking really taking a toll on our body and our, our brain, our physical health, but it's also creating a very wide barrier between us and our feelings. It's the way that people start building what we call walls uh, and, and building walls, these barriers, you can feel those things. Somebody is trying to build a fortress around their heart. And I really want to talk about dismantling these walls and allowing your true emotions to flow freely. When we, Whenever we try to block energy, we try to block the, the realization of something, the, the true expression of something, that's when we're going to find a resistance there, whether it's in connection or or in moving on or moving to our next level or whatever it is that we want, we're not able to do that because there's a lack of flow. So something is not able to be given out and something is not able to get taken in. And it's this natural flow that is going to help your life progress. When you build these barriers up, sure, you're blocking the negative things, right? No one will ever hurt me again, or they will never be able to do that to me again. I hear that a lot, right? Those types of, uh, uh, that way of thinking is actually creating this wall brick by brick that yes, you're going to block those people, but you're also going to block everything good that should be coming into your life as well. Mentally overthinking leads to this constant chatter in our minds. It's the inability to ever pay attention to what's going on in our body or what's going on in our emotions because what we have instead is this rumination that happens, right? It, it keeps us constantly on alert. It actually prevents us from being able to sleep, like I said, stress, anxiety, all of that, that we know have impacts on our physical health, even long term. And more than that, it keeps us from being vulnerable, even with ourselves. This creates a barrier between us and ourselves in terms of who we are, being authentically you with you. When you can do that with you, you'll do that with other people. When you cannot be vulnerable with yourself, when you cannot acknowledge how you are feeling, when you cannot allow yourself to experience and express the whole spectrum of human emotions, then you're going to keep yourself trapped in this space where you're never really healing. And you could be doing all of the things. You could be going to therapy. You could be doing your journaling. But if you aren't actually embracing the process then you're never actually going to be able to express yourself authentically because you're just going through the motions, but you're not really allowing that process to connect and allowing yourself to evolve from that process. One of the things that can be very hard about breaking this cycle is that overthinking often comes out as rationalization. No, I'm just being rational about the situation or no, I'm just needing to strategize on the situation. And it's convincing us that all of the answers are up here, that all of the things that you need in life are, are found between your ears. And a lot of things are happening there that are amazing, that are contributing to the kind of life that you have right now. Absolutely. But that isn't going to be that we, we often think of overthinking as like our safe space, right? If Even if I'm ruminating, I know how to do that. 
And so I don't necessarily know how to move into my heart. I don't know how to feel my emotions. And if that is resonating with you, when I say that to you, it's like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Because if I can make sense of it in my head, then okay, I can just kind of wash away all of the emotions that went with that original thought, right? But in order to break free from overthinking, you actually have to liberate your emotions. The Your emotions are helping you guide yourself through past events, through present events, and ultimately taking you to the person that you should become. So when you understand that your emotions lead lead you to unlocking the the overthinking cycle you'll start embracing them more instead of pushing them away and telling them that that they're getting in the way of you coming up with a solution of this overthinking right but emotional intelligence for yourself like understanding what you're feeling in every moment that's a superpower that is a superpower and it can help you navigate the landscape of whatever life brings to you in a deeper way and in a more true way so how do you go from this overthinking state and underfeeling state to having these things be equal where they can work back and forth where you are well aware of what you're thinking and what you're feeling in the same moment one of the things that can be hard for people even when they're discovering they know that they're overthinking they just don't know what they're thinking about right so paying attention to your thoughts of course is really important but when you when you recognize that you're actually trapped in a cycle of overthinking as a way to keep from feeling or connecting with your genuine emotions i want you to start doing a few things number one do the breathing exercises that i talk about so often on this channel you what we're looking for here is breathing in holding your breath and then breathing out for twice as long as you breathed in so the 7 4 12 method is the one that i like to use myself so breathe in for seven seconds hold for four and then breathe out for 12 but if that is too long try the four four eight method which is four seconds in holding for four and then out for eight and what this does is it really pulls you out of your fight flight or freeze mode and it puts you into your rest and digest mode so it allows you to be more aware to be more calm in your in your physical body it shuts down a lot of the uh a lot of the mechanisms that are activated when you go into that mode that keep you alert and keep you awake and keep you ready to you know fight or get out of a situation that your body and your non-conscious mind perceive as dangerous so what you want to do is shut that off get your body into a calm state of being so that way it allows a channel for your mind to, to now connect with your body. Okay, this is what I'm feeling. So I highly encourage you to get good at using that, uh, that breathing technique because you can use that anywhere and you can use it any time of day. The next thing that I want you to start getting good at is doing like this body scan with your mind, right? So start using your mind in a way that you're telling your mind, I want to know what I'm feeling in my body. So just start at your head, just close your eyes, start at your head. And as you're just imagine you're scanning your body and paying attention to any places that feel tense, any places that you are noticing you're holding tension. Maybe you're clenching your jaw and you didn't even know it. Maybe, um, you know, you were, you were having tension in your neck or in your back and you didn't even know it so as you're doing this find out where is their tension lying you know and then allow that tension to speak to you oh i was um hunching my shoulders because i had bad posture sitting at the desk or i was doing this motion because i was trying to get smaller in a situation because i was so stressed or whatever it was for you you can pick up on why you were having that tension in your physical body and what it was what the correlating thought was when you get used to doing this body scanning technique where you can really uh, pay attention to where you are storing your experiences in your body by the way there's a great book it's called the body keeps the score it is fantastic uh, and it talks all about how we store our memories in our body and and yes that includes trauma but that also includes healthy things, you know, great memories. It includes things like, hey, if you've got a great business mind, well, chances are you have a great business body too because your body has remembered 
what it is like and what is necessary. And it can help participate in your bodily functions to help you build that business, to help you build that great relationship or whatever it is that you're uh, really focusing on in this year. One of the next things that you can get ready to do is train your mind to get better at being grateful. So what you want to do is take a look at the things that you would normally overlook. Maybe you got a really close parking spot you know, at the restaurant, or maybe you uh, were able to get the last ticket to a show that you wanted to see, or whatever it is, these unexpected or these little things that made your life better or easier throughout the day and get better at recognizing them and then giving thanks for them. Gratitude is one of the highest levels of a frequency that you can put your body into. Literally, your whole being responds to the thoughts that you are having. And that's why when you are overthinking, you're just training your body to keep up with that pace and you're training your feelings, to keep up with that pace. But when you allow everything to slow down and you allow the things that you've stored inside of your body and inside of your emotions, your emotional baggage, right? You allow yourself time to un unpack all of that you're going to start to be able to, to truly be in harmony with the way that life wants you to flow, not just the way that, okay, I got to do this and I have to do that. Yes, there are things that we have to get done during the day, but if you find yourself constantly forcing things to happen, you really need to look at if there's an easier flow for you to get into, right? If there, is there a river going in the direction that you want to go in, that would be a lot easier for you to just kind of sail along in that river rather than trying to paddle upstream, so to speak, all of your life. That's just too much. And then the, finally, the last thing that I want to tell you to, or encourage you to try that will help you move from overthinking to, uh, uh, to and under feeling to bringing yourself back into a balance is to really engage in creative expressions. And for a lot of people, it can feel like I don't paint, I'm not, I can't draw, I can't do any of these things. And I totally understand. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, an artist as, as they would call a classically trained one either, but getting into a place where you can express yourself, even expressing your emotions. So one of the things that I love is just being able to close your eyes and just feel how you want to move your body. So just stand in a room all by yourself. You don't have to, you know, make make it this huge production. Just stand in a room by yourself, close your eyes, and really just try moving your body in different ways that maybe you would never have moved your body before. Um, emotions also get trapped in your body. And so moving your body can also help you uh, get rid of, again, some of this emotional baggage that ends up turning into actual physical damage in your body. So doing things like dance, doing things where you are expressing yourself in some way, when you can um, listen to different types of music, maybe you just lay down and listen to calming music, right? This will help you tap into your intuition, your emotional self without constraints, without overthinking. You can just be paying attention to how does this music make me feel? I really encourage you to do that one with headphones. And again, it allows your emotions to... Um, escape your body without necessarily having to identify why am I thinking that way or why am I feeling that way or where did that feeling come from or who gave me that feeling or any of that stuff. It just allows the emotions to start getting used to expressing themselves. As you gain more of this balance between overthinking and underfeeling, you start getting this balance back. Then you're going to start to notice, okay, even in the moment of things like, okay, I, you know, I was having a conversation. This person said this. And it actually reminded me of when I was seven years old and my school teacher said that to me or, you know, or reminded me of a similar relationship that I had when I was younger, whatever. You're going to be able to pick up on that emotional baggage very quickly and in the moment and you're able to identify it and deal with it in a way that it doesn't derail that entire relationship or your entire day. And this is ultimately where we want to get to. We want to get to this place where your mind and your body your, your soul, your emotions, your, your will, your mind are all able to work together and you're not fighting against yourself. A lot of people think that they're doing the right things, but again, they're thinking and they're not feeling. They're thinking, I'm doing the right thing, but this feels, you know, X, Y, and Z. It feels opposite of good. It feels 
draining. It feels tiring. It feels exhausting. And we need to get to a place where we are, are operating our lives in harmony with the way that we were created to. So I hope this video really helps you identify within yourself why you're overthinking, the purpose of overthinking. Remember, that's a protection mechanism. And how to start balancing your overthinking and your underfeeling so that you can really get into this nice flow and not have this year be a year of struggle either. If you need help processing this type of information on a deeper level, I want you to consider joining my Narcissistic Detox Intensive. Applying to my intensive is easy. Just shoot me a text. My number is 512-677-9322. Text the word detox and your name to me, and I'll ask you a few questions to see if you are ready to get started so that you do not have a repeat of last year or the year before, or maybe your entire life this year. Healing, changing, changing the direction of your entire life is easy once you have the steps to do it. So I hope to see you there. And if not, I will see you in my next video.